Welcome, brothers and sisters, to the part two of this Bible study. We'll start with our text, reading of our text, which is Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Are you there? Let's read it together. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. I'm reading with the New King James Version. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Verse 19, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I would like to take that verse 19 in English Standard Version, as well as the Amplified. So English Standard Version says to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amplified Version says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And put that acceptable year of the Lord that to proclaim the day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound. The, the year of the acceptable year of the Lord is the day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound. Glory be to God, divine jubilee. We did the introduction in part one, and we read Leviticus 25 from verse 1 to 22. And there we made clear that Jubilee in the law, the law of Jubilee was to be celebrated. It was a celebration that took place every 50 years, every 50 years. The children of Israel were commanded by God to celebrate Jubilee every 50 years. And this Jubilee had significance. Certain things were commanded to happen, and they did happen during Jubilee. And we have established that the law was a tutor to bring us to the real thing, which is in Christ Jesus. And hence, Jesus Christ is the true jubilee, we call divine jubilee. As we can see in Galatians chapter 3, Galatians chapter 3, let's read verse 4. Galatians chapter 3, verse 4. It said, Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. So everything that was in the law, that the people of old enjoyed in the law, as a principle, we can obtain the same by faith through Jesus Christ and much, much more because Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law. And the law was a tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. You can see in verse 25, it says, but after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. I'm reading Galatians chapter 3 verses 24 and 25. If you add verse 26, it says, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So Jubilee, every 50 years, God said it was a very special time to bless his people beyond whatever they have ever experienced in their lives. And this was just a tutor an example of what God intended 
or intends or has done for us in Christ Jesus. So as at their time, it's what God intended. But today, it has been fulfilled for us in Christ Jesus. So we ended last uh, part one with an assignment to look at these blessings that God provided for the children of Israel in the law of Jubilee, and then see the application, the similarity, and even much more what God has provided for us in Christ. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we said we should study Leviticus chapter 25 from verse 1 to the end. The end is verse 55. And we also to study uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, which is our text we've just read, and Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. So we're going to read Isaiah, which is the one we didn't read, and uh, verses 1 to 3, and then we will go into the discussion right away. Isaiah chapter 61 which was the fulfillment of uh, in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19 that we saw. Let's read it together. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Oh, for what purpose? That God may be glorified in our lives. That's why he's doing it. That's why he's giving, giving us his son, Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So I'm going to share my screen to start the discussion, brothers and sisters. So we'll continue our Bible study, Divine Jubilee. And we did cover objectives last time and introduction. And so we want to focus on discussion of key lessons. Uh, key verses we've read, key reference scriptures in the New Testament um, uh, that also backs up the, the, the discussion we want to have. Let's look at this picture celebration of jubilee and the significance of it which we're talking about freedom liberty it is celebration but what are we celebrating we're celebrating our freedom and liberty glory be to god and so the assignment um we're going to look at the provisions of god for the people of old under the law of Jubilee and take that to also look at what God has provided for us in Christ because Jesus Christ is indeed the divine Jubilee. That's, I will stop sharing now and we'll hold our discussion and then we'll come back to connect. So please feel free, open the line and let's hear what you have studied. So we're focusing on Leviticus chapter 25 from verse 1 to the end. Feel free, any point you make, tell us the verse and we will read that verse together. And you're free to corroborate with any other scripture, God's provision for his people under the law of Jubilee. And we'll then look at God's provision for us today in the divine jubilee through Jesus Christ. That's what we're looking at. All right, please feel free, open the line. Yes, uh, what I want to say is that uh, my key verses actually come from um, 
conferences, 39 to 50, that's where my focus uh, was. And that's what I want to discuss. Uh, by the time I took time to study the, the book of Leviticus 25 from first one to the end, I discovered in, that, uh, in those verses that God is not the God of confusion. He knows exactly what he's doing mm -hmm. because uh, there he gave instruction that uh, there are people that are not to be enslaved. There are people that uh, he mentioned the fact that anybody that is of the tribe of Israel, that comes from Israel, that is living with the brother maybe as a servant, should not be treated as a bond man. And that, that person should only be seen as maybe as a servant, but not as a born man. And uh, when I read, when you read them from that 39 down to 32, I mean 42, 43, 45 again, he also talked about strangers, that these are the people that can be enslaved, those that can be treated as born men. So my lesson from here is that as someone that Christ has redeemed, if God really picked interest in the people that he brought out from the land of Egypt, and he gave instruction that these people are special people, they should not be maltreated, they should not be enslaved by anybody. If God could do that to the Israelites, now I have to ask myself, how much more myself, whom Christ had died for? If Christ died for me, and that means I have the liberty, I have the freedom to live the, the best of life that anybody could live. And that uh, for me to be, to be under this God's protection, I have to understand, I have to believe and know exactly what he had done for me through the death of his son, Jesus Christ, who died and took my sins away. So my, 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 my takeaway here is that, that as a Christian that I am, as someone who believes in Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, that I'm covered, that nobody has the right to put me into any kind of slavery, be it physical slavery or spiritual slavery, because I'm a special person to God. If God paid attention to the Jews that he delivered from the, from the land of Egypt, as we can see in that place. So my attention, my focus is that my belief and confidence is that if God could do that to the Jews, now as a Christian and a believer in Jesus Christ, I'm even having a better advantage compared to the Jews, com compared to the Israelites. So that is exactly what I actually picked from this discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent contribution. No enslavement, no bondage through Jesus Christ. We have been redeemed. One whom Christ has redeemed cannot be enslaved by anybody or anything, whether spiritual or physical. We have better advantage, that's his word. And also says this, he has seen tremendous provision of God's protection, God's protection for the children of Israel. How much more for us here now? Thank you, brother. Next person, next person. That was excellent, clear points, clear reference, and um, even personal conviction, uh, and, and that you could always hear action plan from, from his discussion, uh, his own personal resolve to leave and enjoy that uh, uh, redemptive and get that redemptive experience that Christ has brought to, to him, brought to us. Okay, please, next person, open the line and make your contribution. Yes, Joy, please go ahead. From what I read, I think the lesson I picked up was on sustenance and provisions. And I think one of the blessings was God providing for them um, in the year of Jubilee because they weren't supposed to sow or reap anything from the land, but they were still able to enjoy the fruits of their labor from the past because the blessings were so much. So, and this is illustrated in Leviticus 25 verse 21. Yeah, so that was the main lesson I picked, like 
God's sustenance and provisions. And till this day, he continues to sustain and provide for his children and those who trust in him and call upon him. Excellent. Thank you. 20. He said, and if you say, what shall we eat in the seventh year, since we shall not sow nor gather in our produce? 21. Then I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year, and it will bring forth produce enough for three years. Glory be to God. Thank you for that excellent contribution. Next person, please. Sustenance and provisions. Go. Jehovah Jireh. He will provide. He can provide. And he has provided. Next person, please. Next contribution. Okay, Sister Comfort, please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Pastor. It's the same thing that uh, we have been saying that uh, the years of Jubilee, God take into account everything and everybody. He provided for everybody. If we look at verse 35, he's talking about lending to the poor. God knows that there might be a situation that people fall into difficult situation. So God said, if your brother becomes poor and fall into poverty, he said you sh they should help that person out by lending to the person without asking for profit. So you can see that Jesus said that was why he came for. If he came to preach, he proclaimed, liberty and freedom and to uh, free the uh, liberty to the poor. Mm -hmm. So you see that the principle of Jubilee is also applied in Christ Jesus. Jesus came for the rich, the poor, everybody, everyone. He takes care of them. Wow, that's, that's so powerful. See why it's good to discuss because the kind of insights uh, the Spirit of God will be giving to us differently, uh, different perspectives is so rich. It's so rich. Jesus came for everyone. And the Lord, in the law of Jubilee, accounted for everybody. He, 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 he considered everybody the poor, the rich, the powerful everybody thank you so much and the same way he has given us his son jesus who came for everybody who is for everybody so let us all come into christ thank you beloved sister thank you okay let's share the screen then and look at what i have put together as a summary the law of Jubilee, the provisions under the law of Jubilee. If we start reading from verse 9, let's go from verse 9. It says atonement and forgiveness. Atonement and forgiveness. The, 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 the trumpet was to sound to declare Jubilee on the day of atonement. 9 say, then you shall cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month, on the day of atonement, you shall make the trumpet to sound throughout all your land, throughout all your land. So in the same vein, Jesus Christ has become that sacrifice of atonement for our sins, for all evil and the forgiveness, forgiveness that God has brought to us. Number two, freedom and liberty. Of course, like uh, a sister said the other in part one said, when we talk about liberty, it means there was something, there was a captivity, there was enslavement. And we did mention sin is 
an enslavement, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the capital, captivity of the devil, and we are free from sin through Jesus Christ. But not just free from sin, free to relate with God. So verse 10, it says, and you shall consecrate, note that word, consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land, all the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you and each of you shall return to his possession and each of you shall return to his family. So it is all the land, not uh, um, one person, not selected few. Again, the point our sister made, all throughout the land. So in the same manner, Jesus Christ has come to the whole world. As the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. However, while this was happening in the land, the territory of the Jews, do you know that other people had their land and they had their own things. So this now defined this land in Christ Jesus. In divine jubilee, as the Bible says, and I think we should look at that, Colossians, let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. It says, in fact, verse 13, it says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. The kingdom of the Son of His love. Who is this Son of His love? Jesus Christ, 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So there is a kingdom. This land now is for those who come into Christ, the divine jubilee, the land. While we may be in the same physical space, the divine jubilee is, is spiritual and is by faith. We may be in the same land, physical land, unlike what happened in the law of Jubilee, where it was a physical land that demarcated the operation of the principle of Jubilee. Today, we may be in the same land, but one person may be in Christ, and therefore is in the divine Jubilee. Another person may not be in Christ, and therefore is not in that land. This is the difference. So verse 10 says, proclaim this liberty throughout all the land. The land, the territory that the children of Israel occupied. So a kingdom is a territory that is ruled by a king. And that territory, the king of the territory under the divine jubilee is Jesus Christ. As you can clearly see there in that uh, uh, Colossians chapter 1 verses of verse 13. And if you add 14, it says we've been translated into the kingdom of the son of his law. So this our land now, the land we dwell in is a spiritual land. It is a land by faith ruled by our king, the appointed king over the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Glory be to our Father. And so for all those who are in this kingdom, God said, proclaim liberty. No enslavement. No oppression. Glory be to God. Number three, restoration. Restoration. That same verse 10 says, it shall be a jubilee for you and each of you shall return to his possession and each of you shall return to his family. So again, restoration to possession and family. 
possession, talking about the physical inheritances, and family, both physical in terms of your family, and more importantly, the family of God, those whom God has called out to himself, those who are in Christ. Number four, righteousness in dealings. Righteousness in dealings. We can see from verse 11 to 13 and then 14 through 17. 11 says, the 50th year shall be a jubilee to you. In it you shall neither sow nor reap what grows of its own accord, nor gather the grapes of your untended vine twelve, for it is the jubilee. It shall be holy to you. You shall eat its produce from the field, holy to you. That's the first point. 13, in this year of Jubilee, each of you shall return to his possession. Again, emphasizing restoration. 14, and if you shall, and if you sell anything to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor, hand, you shall not oppress one another. You shall not oppress one another. No oppression. Righteous in righteousness in dealings. If you continue to read the other 14 through uh, 17, you see the same thing continues. Uh, 15 says, according to the number of years after the Jubilee, you shall buy from your neighbor. And according to the number of years of crops, he shall sell to you. I jump to 17. Say, therefore, you shall not oppress one another, but you shall fear your God for I am the Lord your God. So the fear of God, righteousness, was abound. And that again speaks for those who come into Christ and say, yes, I've now come into the land. I've come into the family. And then you don't fear God. We don't fear God. We do things just the same way the people that are outside our land are doing outside the family of God are doing because uh, we said uh, it is modernization. It's the world today. Um, that's not God's standard. God's standard is righteousness. Number five, increase, increase. Season of God's abundance and unlimited favor, sustenance, like our sister rightly put it, sustenance, sustenance. You see that in 19 and 21, which we have read. Number six, safety, safety. And that's again emphasizing protection that uh, was earlier. This mentioned protection, uh, verse 18. It says, so you shall observe my statutes and keep my, ju my judgments and perform them and you will dwell in the land in safety. So God will keep us safe when we follow Come into Christ and follow his word and do according to his ways. Seven would put their redemption and release unconditionally, unconditionally. Again, this was um, what Brother Sonny emphasized. No enslavement, but we must be free and released. Even if somebody was a slave or um, on, uh, under any, sold his own property. So redemption and release, both of property or of the person, the person must be released. So redemption and released. And again, we have just read that um, Colossians 1. So there you see the redemption through Jesus Christ. We have been redeemed that God has redeemed us. I think we should read that Colossians again. It's, it's uh, one of those very powerful scriptures that uh, Colossians chapter 1, 13 and 14. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his Lord, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Everything is there for us. We have been redeemed. Hallelujah. Redemption and release. Now let's look at 24 to 28. He said, and in all the land of your possession, you shall 
grant redemption of the land. Grant redemption of the land. If one of your brethren becomes poor and has sold some of his possession, and if his redeeming relative comes to redeem it, then he may redeem what his brother sold. Or if the man has no one to redeem it, but he himself comes able, uh, he himself becomes able to redeem it, then let him count the years since its sale and restore the remainder to the man to whom he sold it, that he may return to his possession. 28. But if he is not able to have it restored to himself, then what was so shall remain in the hand of him who bought it until the year of Jubilee. And in the Jubilee, it shall be released. I say it shall be released. And he shall return to his possession. Glory be to God. <laughs> God said it doesn't matter whether he has money or not. As long as Jubilee is declared, it shall be released to him. That is for possession. If you jump to verse 54, the same condition for one that was that sold himself as a slave. 55, 54. Maybe we'll just read from 53. Say, he shall be with him as a yearly hired servant, and he shall not rule with rigor over him in your sight. 54. And if he is not redeemed in these years, then he shall be released in the year of Jubilee, he and his children with him. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how long the enslavement has been. When the year of Jubilee comes, he unconditionally shall be released. Today is that day of release because Jesus Christ the divine jubilee has come to set the captives free, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the day of God's abundant, unlimited favor upon his people. The last point to make jubilee is the day of rejoicing, joy, and celebration. And so in Christ Jesus, in the same manner, we have rejoicing. We have joy, everlasting joy, celebration. And I want to call us to come to celebrate in Christ. Beyond these eight points, beloved brothers and sisters, there are many more. The expansion of this jubilee, as you saw in Isaiah chapter 61. So we're going to look at that again, focusing now take this and then detail out We all this has come to us in Christ Jesus. But when you look at Isaiah chapter 61, which was the prophecy and fulfilled in Luke chapter 4, Jesus declared that it's been fulfilled. You see uh, verses 2 and 3, it says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, which we've talked about, and the day of vengeance of our God, the two-edged sword, right? Oh, yes, favor for his people, and he will take vengeance against the enemies of his people to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, hallelujah, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he, God Almighty, our Father in heaven, may be glorified, and our Lord Jesus Christ, to him be all glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, we want to pray, and we're going to take and look deeper in God's provisions under Christ Jesus for us, our divine jubilee. We've talked about some of them, but beyond what the law of jubilee provided, which is provided for us today, or which Aaron 
have been provided for us today in Christ Jesus. There are much, much more. And I want us to, again, take in part three and look at those additional provisions of God for your life, for my life, as the children of God, those whom God has brought into his kingdom under our king. His appointed, anointed one, Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. I want to pray. You have heard this word. All that God has done for us through his son, Jesus Christ. Have you come to Christ? And are you enjoying the provisions of the divine jubilee? Let's go ahead and talk to God now. If you have not come to the land, the kingdom, the territory that is ruled by this king, you can't be discussing the provisions thereof. So first step is to come into Christ. So let us pray. Righteousness must prevail in this territory, in this kingdom, as we have heard. Everyone is accounted for. And we also must do good works. We must do good works. There are so many things we've covered there. Just go ahead now and talk to God concerning your own life. What is your own situation? How have you lived as one who has come into this great blessing of divine jubilee in Christ Jesus? So go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. There is atonement in the blood. And there is forgiveness, and there is sanctification, the removal completely. Oh, while well, atonement was merely covering, there is sanctification, which is the removal completely of sin. And there is the forgiveness, everlasting forgiveness, totally. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Go ahead. Go ahead. One more minute. Talk to God. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Now we want to round off. So let's agree together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for helping us and showing to us your divine provisions in Christ Jesus our divine jubilee. And Lord, thank you for bringing us into this everlasting life. It's so wonderful. We're so grateful. We're so thankful to you. And so, Father, we pray for every one of us, whatever the state of our journey is, Lord, we ask that you help us now to enjoy the fullness of this jubilee that you have given to us in Christ Jesus. One more time, Lord, we pray. Cleanse, purge, forgive us all our sins, our iniquities, errors, mistakes, transgressions, even ignorance, Lord, forgive us all. But Lord, help us by your redemptive power through the blood of Jesus. Bring us, O oh God Almighty, to enjoy the full blessings of the kingdom, your kingdom, Almighty God. Father, is there, has there been any oppression, any enslavement still operating in our lives? This is a violation of the law of Jubilee. And so, Lord, we agree right now upon any life that there has been oppression, enslaved, whether spiritual or physical, we agree together that enslavement, that oppression ceases right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh God, for your provision and your blessing for our lives. Now, O oh Lord, we ask, help us all to enjoy the fullness of the divine jubilee in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. 
The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. And this is where we will end. We look forward to connecting next Sunday, where we will cover Divine Jubilee Part 3. And it's going to be with very powerful ministration, so don't miss it. It's going to be with very powerful ministration. Because we'll now be focusing on Christ and Christ alone, now that we've seen some headlines and key points of what the law of Jubilee provided, and there is much more. So I want to use this opportunity to really thank the contributors, uh, Brother Sonny, Sister Joy, Sister Comfort. Thank you so much for those insightful contributions. Please let's continue to look deeper and get ready and pray. Because as I've said, Jesus Christ always manifests himself. And I believe next Sunday we're going to see his manifestation uh, in a greater dimension than uh, anything, anything we've experienced. God bless you.